Acclimating tissue culture has to be one of the more challenging processes in growing houseplants. But today I'm going to give you guys our entire process that we use here to acclimate these plants so that you can have the most success and they can grow up and become large houseplants like these. Now, not all of these steps are required, but the more of them you follow, the more success you're going to have in your survival rate of your TC. First, you're gonna need some tissue culture. Now, most tissue culture comes to us from Thailand, and it comes in bags like these. This is many times how the plant will arrive. In the agar kind of spilled around and a couple of the bags and bottles actually burst in my last shipment. I did hand select about seven or ten of these out of a hundred. These are Spiritus Sancti and I'm going to transplant a couple of them today and I listed the rest of them on our website if you want to do this at home. All these products you can either get on our website or on Amazon. And this is the result. These are the Spiritus Sancti up in the front. This is Musa in the back and I even have some Albo nodes growing in this mixture. So step one is to cut open your bag. Make sure your hands are really clean in this whole process. Cleanliness is very, very important in the process of acclimation. I found a pair of tongs and scissors are great in this process. Grab your plant out. And this is just warm water, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And the warm water allows the agar, that jelly substance on the bottom of the roots, to come off easily. So give it a little bit of a swish around like that. And actually, I just broke a root off, but that's really common. And there's a bunch more left, so it's nothing to worry about. And now we've exposed the plantlet to the ambient air, to all the fungi and bacteria that's on my hands. Hopefully not, because I washed up well. But now we begin to kind of pull aside all of the roots. And the important part here is to leave on like the top three leaves. So I'm going to pull those ones up and kind of just peel back the lower ones. We don't need these lower leaves. Unless it's a shoot, of course, sometimes the TC will be overexposed to BAP, which is the hormone that contributes to shooting. And then they put it in the rooting hormone. That's what we're using here. But I'm going to pull off all these lower leaves. As I said, as long as we have a couple roots, we are good to go. So that is really the final result. Do you see that lowest one? I'm going to take that off. And it's important to take off all these leaves because if you don't get them off, they become sources of rot. So this will rot underneath the substrate and this will create a rot spot, if you will, into the root zone and stem of this plant. We have our plantlet. Next up, we have a fungicide here. Now this is captan. This stuff is really gnarly. It's pretty dangerous. So I'm gonna put on some gloves, but I can't exactly suggest one for you guys to use. That's the one we use, but use it at your own risk. Don't use it around children or animals. If you're doing the powder form into the liquid, make sure to wear a mask. So I'm gonna grab our plantlet and just do a dunk into the captan. I mix this pretty strong, so I will just leave it about a minute or two. You can leave it up to five or 20 minutes. This fungicide will prevent the plant from dying off or damping off from fusarium or pythium or any of the root rot, stem rot causing issues. While that's soaking, I'm going to mix up our water that we're going to dunk in after the fungicide and that will end up watering our media with. So this is a half gallon of water. It's just tap water, regular chlorinated tap water. I'm fine to use that. If you want to use distilled or RO, go for it. So first into our water is some vitamin B1. Again, you don't have to do all of these things, but the fungicide is absolutely important. The things I put into this water are just things we've found that have increased our success rate. B1 helps with transplant shock. I know that's a contentious subject out there, but we have found it works. I'm gonna use two mLs for the half gallon. And always make sure that your water is kind of between about 70 and 80 degrees. You don't wanna shock it with really cold water. Always mix between your ingredients. Next up is NAA. This is a rooting hormone. This is actually one of the components that is in the rooting jelly agar, which your plant comes with. So we wanna continue the plant on its rooting journey for this next 30 days. That tray I showed you is about 30 days old. So I'm gonna use a half of an ml per half gallon, which equates to one ml per gallon and mix that around there also finally we have our a and b hydroponic fertilizer this is the one we use and sell in-house but you can use any one you have at home just use a very mild solution about 25 percent of the manufacturer suggested on the label so i'm going to use one ml part a and two mls part b because we're going to dunk the plant into this and those roots that are already exposed are going to immediately absorb this and that's why this final step, I'm going to actually pH the water. Now, don't go running. pH your water is very simple and it's very important. 
I've just bought about 20 of these to test out to eventually sell, but this style of pH pen goes for like 10 bucks on Amazon and they work really well. So I'm gonna check my, the pH of my water and I'm looking for 5.8 and I'm currently at 6.7. I'm gonna add a little pH down to this. Be very careful, pH down is very strong so it will swing your pH very drastically, very quickly. So we're right at 5.8, so we're good to go. These are also super handy when you are watering a very particular plant like an anthurium to make sure you're not experiencing nutrient lockout for the typical aeroid mix or coconut core. You should be watering at 6.0 pH every time I water all of these plants, they are watered at the exact pH. So for 10 bucks, it's a pretty good investment. Next up, I'm grabbing the plant from the fungicide, making sure not to get it on me. And I'm gonna dunk it right into the water and let it rinse off that concentrated fungicide. Next up, we're gonna prepare our vessel. If you're doing a single or just a couple, something small like this that can trap the humidity is great. Make sure that you have holes in the top and holes in the bottom. This is vital. It roots way better and do not let water stand in the bottom of it. Just water it more frequently. If you let water stand in the bottom of it, it's more likely to go anaerobic and that means living without oxygen and that's that funky swamp smell which contributes to root rot. You can also obviously plant in a tray like this. This has drainage at the bottom and it has a humidity dome that covers over it. And I try and keep this at 90% humidity. Another vital step is this is perlite and not stratum, not the brand Fluval Stratum. This is better. This is a smaller lava rock. Someone told me about it on YouTube. It's called Eco Planted Complete Carob Sea, something like that. I'll put it up on the screen. It's from Petco and you can buy it online, I believe, but just go to your local pet store and pick it up in person. It's gravel for like the bottom of an aquarium. You can use it straight out of the bag, but if you use it again or want to reuse it, I always get that question. Take it, mix it together with your perlite like this, put it in Pyrex, a little water on it into the microwave for a couple minutes, maybe a minute and a half, let it steam, that will kill everything. Heat kills just about everything. You want to be sterile. And this is a clean scrubbed cup. So I'm gonna scoop up a little in the bottom, usually about an inch I want the roots to go down into. And then this is the important part that none of those leaves go beneath the media. So I kind of like lean the plant up like that. And then as I fill in, I kind of keep the plant upright in the position I want it to be in, like that. And it eventually can stand on its own. It's okay, there's perlite and stratum or lava rock on the leaves. I like this better than the fluval stratum because the Fluval stratum gets very like waxy and glossy and holds on to water way more. I found this grows better, faster roots because it dries out quicker. That's how you grow faster roots. There it is, there's the transplant. Technically, I could take off this lower leaf because anything that goes in contact with the media, that watered media like this will give it a little bit of water over it. And this is already pH'd water till a little drips out of the side. Make sure the water goes all the way around. But if that leaf contacts the media, it will rot. If just the tip touches wet media, it will rot and become a source of rot. So look for those browning leaves and make sure to prune them off as you see them. And actually because of this, I'm gonna get ahead of this one and just nick off the lowest leaf. The plant doesn't necessarily need that right now. Cause I also have a bit of a root exposed right there. So I'll just backfill just a little bit more like that. Now on with the lid. Now this is important. You need to check on this plant to water it probably about two times a week. It must stay between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, really like 82. If you have a seedling tray warmer, use it, but be careful that it doesn't dry out too quickly. Ideally you have some condensation on the lid of this. And typically when the tray goes without or the lid goes without condensation, that means it's time to water the plant. So make sure not to overwater it. You can see the condensation on here. Allow this to dry up a bit. You want those roots to stretch and grow out. And I'll show you guys the result of 30 days being in here. The plant has grown a full new set of branching roots and it has attached to the lava rock and the perlite. As I said, we have a lot of these products on our website and you can also get the top eight Spiritus Sancti that I did import. The rest of them I'm going to be subculturing and taking and dividing, but the best ones I did list on our website at prettyandgreen.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you did enjoy it, please click the like button down below. 
and consider subscribing since we make one video about plants every week. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.